And gentlemen, Brian Ryan to the building. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> yes. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I've been <laughs> wanting to come on here since um since I saw you at the local smokeout, and when was that? Four months ago in Apple Valley. Yeah, in so August. It's, it's an honor to finally <laughs> finally be here. So this is it's all yeah. my pleasure, dude. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. It was so we were just talking about it. it was so hot that day. We got beat up, man. It was like 105, 106 degrees. You know how it was. It was brutal. Oh my god. Yeah, you know, it's so funny too. Like I've been living out here like my whole life where it, that day actually wasn't so bad compared to like the hottest days of the summer, at least like the, the usual, you know, but it was still pretty hot. I, I got a mild sunburn from it, but I had tons of fun. So um, if you guys hold again, I'll definitely be there for sure. I, I can't wait. We might. We're, we've kind of gone back and forth with a couple of promoters, but they, they kind of fell through and it wasn't like what I was looking for. So we'll see if, if it happens or not. I'm sure maybe next year we'll do something. But uh, Brian, a lot of people may not know who you are here in this chat. Can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know where in the bouts in the world you are right this second. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Okay. Um, my name is Brian Riot. I've been basically playing music since I was a kid. Didn't really start pursuing it seriously until I'd say right before the pandemic happened. Um, I released a few singles, uh, the, this year, looking back, looking at the production standpoint, everything, I feel like it's not the best. So I really want to get back into the studio next year, remix, remaster and re-record it. And then, um, I also have like another six songs I'm currently working on about EP's worth that I really want to release. I'm hoping by spring or summer of next year. And then same thing, like around that time, I want to start getting back into playing shows and playing some festivals and, and just, uh, go from there. So I'm super excited for next year. Those are basically my New Year's resolutions. Hell yeah! So. Do, do you produce your own music? Are you are you going to somebody else to increase the quality? Like, what's your plan on that? Yeah, it's half and half. So, like with this, um, I was this was mainly just self produced by me. But then when I I was listening uh, listening to other songs, um, I've been on DW Presents a couple times. So listening to their songs, how good the quality was, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I definitely got to step it up and go to a professional studio and, and um, actually get it done the, the professional way. So now I, I have a producer that I currently work with that basically mix and masters. But when it comes to the recording, um, I booked a couple sessions um, with a guy named Eric in, in North Hollywood that I, I can't wait to work with. He has a very uh, metal rock kind of experience. I'm trying to pursue something that's more like new metal, but modern elements as well. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what, what I can create and what I can put out there next year. Yeah, because your sound has like a little bit of like a new metal meets like Static X industrial kind of vibe yeah. to me, like all of that comboed, which is which is cool. And there's been like a resurgence of new metal the last couple of years. Like it's totally coming back. You know, that's what I noticed too, man. Like that's even the past few years. I mean, there are tons of artists like um, even back like dating back to 2017. There's this band that I discovered named Dead. That lyric at that time came out not even a year and they're already playing not fest they're already touring with like stone sour and corn and they have like a very um new metal-esque corn-esque kind of sound and then from there it just seems like a lot of artists kept doing it after them and then so i'm, I'm really excited to actually see that come back because honestly like even though you know i was i was born in 98 so like i was a kid when that that stuff was in its prime it's like i'd love to, to see it come back because honestly that's one of my favorite subgenres of metal period so it's it's really exciting to see hell yeah my uh, my co-host jb jb music 661 he was at the festival too jb uh what's your first question for brian yeah it's a pleasure to meet you uh my first my first question to you is um when what you said you most of your music is uh self-produced what is your dog that you use um first of all pleasure to meet you too um i I'm surprised. I don't think I don't know if I caught you at, at the festival, but honestly, it's it's an honor to meet you as well. Um, when it comes to the DAW that I use, so basically, there's some. When it comes to the keyboards, the, the sub basses, all that, I basically just use GarageBand because it has pretty much the the quality that that isn't too bad, and you can easily play with it um, using that specific DAW. But when it comes to pretty much everything else, I was using um, Logic Pro and. and uh, was it pro tools as well so um right now like uh, the guys that i'm going to as well 
<clears throat> they use all kinds of stuff. They use Ableton. They use Logic Pro as well, Pro Tools. It's just they do a way better <laughs> job than me because they're legit, like, certified people who, who actually have a degree in it. I've only been, been self-producing for a couple years or so. So, the cool, uh, yeah. The that, cool thing about that is you can, you can it. like, uh, export your complete session of, like, your, your demo and stuff, if you will, and then uh, just bring it to them. And they can, you know, see what you're going for and then clean it up, re-record it blah 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 and tighten it up and stuff. exactly uh, yeah that's what i love about it and um that's why it was so quick for me to kind of get those songs done but yes that, that is true what you just said what song would you like us to start with today as far as uh the three that you have on spotify which one do you want us to play first um let's do i revive that's my personal favorite <laughs> why is it your favorite and what is the song about and what does it mean to you so um the reason why it's my favorite is because I feel like um, I was being extremely experimental with it. Um, not saying that the other two songs aren't really experimental. It's just with this one, I, I really... This was a song that I was writing around 2018. Um, so it, it took a while to actually to, to actually bring it to life. Um, and also the reason why, leaning to the whole what, what it's about and everything, it's just... This was around when I was writing the lyrics for it. This was around the pandemic and um, just how the media was, how just it felt like that was a time where we should have been more united and, and more like, listen, we're all in the same boat here. We have to we have to be united and, and actually defend for ourselves instead of trying to attack others and trying to, to, to just use hate and all, and all this uh, stuff to, to divide us. And that's pretty much the meaning of that song. Um, but I, I really love it mainly because of just all the the last few years that i put of work into it finally bring it to life and honestly i, I think it's probably the slightly most well produced when, when it comes to um how good of a job i did compared to the other two let's check it out we're hanging with brian wright this is i revive if you're feeling it hit the follow button support him is that a, a guitar effect that's doing that what is that you know what's so funny um yeah so that was basically just the modulation effects that, that i use on my guitar and um what i did was i tweaked it at, on the production side of things to make it sound more of just like um i don't know how to say it, more of like a like a phaser osculated kind of sound but that was literally just me um playing open uh, an open c chord on repeat with nothing more than a um, boss ml2 distortion and a um was the other one the oh my the md 200 that just came out a couple years ago it's it's a very like coarse modulated uh focused kind of pedal so that's basically all i used for sure for what uh what other specific southern california artists would you like to work with as far as getting more gigs in the area my favorite artist right now so far i funny thing is i first discovered them um at your festival um is fracture i really love that band um i they have a very vintage 80s sound but like it's so like especially when you see them live it's like it's so much more aggressive and it's so much and it gets it, it has so much more energy than like listening to like the spot ver versions not saying that there's no energy in it at all it's just it's so much amplified when you actually see them live and they're they're definitely one of the best live bands um that i've seen in the in my area um them and I would say I would say it's between them and Bantamweight. Um, I heard recently uh -huh. the singer. I don't know what what happened. I guess um, uh, he he left or, or something. I, I'm curious to see exactly what happens in the future. They posted them, something about Bantamweight it. Bantamweight and Fracture. Bantamweight. They, yeah. Um, they said they're still going on. Oh. So this, okay. so they recently okay. went from a two piece to a three piece, and I think at the festival that was the first time they ever played or the second show they ever played as a three piece, and then Keith left recently, but. Uh, they're still going. Max and the other guy said they're still going on as I don't know if it's gonna be a two piece or they're gonna find a third person, but they're still Band and Wait will continue. That was, yeah. That's I mean, that's really good to hear. Um that the only thing I was curious about is just like if the singer left, um, basically what what you just said, like are they gonna maybe have the bassist or the or the drummer um Max sing, or are they gonna just get a new front man to to sing his parts like and to make new music with? But um, I think I did hear something that they were continuing on. I just didn't know exactly how, but I, I guess we'll find out. So Time will I tell. Time will tell. JB, what's yeah, your next, exactly. next question for Brian uh, that you have for him? Yeah, before I say a question, I want to say shout out to Fracture. They're, like you said, they're very youthful. They're, they're young, and so I can't wait until 
they're getting a little bit more mature in their music to see what they're coming with. It's, it's going to be crazy. But uh, my other question would be, um, have you had any other music projects other than this um, in your lifetime? Or did, did you do stuff like for a church when you were growing up or anything like that? Um, th no, not, not necessarily a, a church. I think the closest thing to other projects is I had a um, SoundCloud. Was it a SoundCloud? Yeah, it was a SoundCloud account. I don't know if it's even still there, but um, I, I went by – what name did I go by? That was so long ago. I was literally like a teenager. I'm, I'm trying to think. I want to say it was like a, like um, a Brian or like D.E. Brian or something like that. And that was basically – what I was doing, I was basically doing like um, modern – at that time, like electronic um, chill, chill wave kind of music. And, um, you yeah, know, it just it, – like – there's nothing wrong. Like, listen, I'm, even though I'm a metal rock metal artist, like I love pretty much all kinds of genres, like nearly every single genre. There's at least a few songs that I'm like, Oh yeah, I dig this. And as much as I like electronics, EDM, whatever, it just, I just didn't like, it wasn't really in my soul as much as metal because I basically grew up with metal since I was a kid. I, I really have early memories of me like in the, like in the van, it in and, and all that so <laughs> that's that's pretty much what, what it was for me cool uh brian did you bring the hot sauce yes yeah, so here's the thing man i i haven't i i swear to god i thought i had like my little um uh because i had like this little ghost pepper hot sauce i was looking for I haven't had it in months so i was looking in the fridge for it I, I couldn't find it but the closest thing that i did find i found some uh del inferno del taco sauces yeah, that'll that i work. got like a few weeks ago that'll work for okay, now cool cool what uh what movie or tv show <laughs> have you seen the most where if i ask you a trivia on this movie or tv show you will not get stumped that's a good one i would say i can't guarantee if i will not get stumped but i will say like the best chance i have is anything family guy or south park related because those are the two cartoons I pretty much watched almost every single episode. I got of. a ton <laughs> of South Park. Uh, let's go ahead and jam Interface. Nice, nice. While I uh, look right. up look up some South Park trivia, just give me a second. And uh, here we go. All right. All right, my friend. I'm going to stump you right here. We're going to see. Here we go. All right. What occupation? They start off easy and they get hard. So this is the easy one. What occupation does Stan's dad have? Oh my God! Wait, wait, wait. Uh, archaeologist, or how you say that? Archaeologist. That is not correct. Mm. Oh. So bust out the uh, the Del Taco sauce. All right. Have fun. The answer is geologist. You were really, really close. Oh. Almost had it. Gotcha, my bad. Bitch. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You just got it. So I'll join you in some sauce. I'll do. Uh, let's see. I'll do this in intense garlic number five, which I'm almost done with. It's not really that too, too right. spicy, but I'll match it with you. Uh, JB, what's a, what's a serious question you have for Brian while he's being tortured by hot sauce? So a serious question that I have is, say, you know, if today yeah. you eating that hot sauce was the last thing you did, what is the message that you want to leave this world with your music um, when it comes just to everything, it's just a whole summarization. A deep one. Um, yeah. Um, let me let me think about that one just for a second. I, you know, even recording music. Like, here's the thing: my perspective on music, especially doing it for a living, it's one of those things where you can't like you you have to really have your heart and soul into it. It's not like one of those things where you can be have one foot in one foot out because otherwise you're not going to make it too far. It's one of those things where you really have to persevere through everything. And, and for me, that's what it taught me about is perseverance. And not only that, but just being yourself, like a lot of these songs, a lot of the root meeting never change in and, and I revive as well it is mainly just about saying, listen, this is me. I'm proud of it. And there's no reason to be ashamed of who you are. We all have flaws. We all have insecurities. We're not perfect. That's fine. But you know what? At some point of life, there's going to be other people that will try to drag you down. Whatever is going on in their life, you know, it's unfortunate. I wish nothing but the best for them. Hopefully they can they can realize that, you know, it's not all about being being 
better than everyone. It's, it's about being a better version of yourself day by day. If, if this ended, whatever, the one message I would like to tell anyone, not just fans, but like anyone who happens to, to, um, to how you say encounter my music or whatever, is just basically be yourself, do what you love. Life is way too short to, to not do what you love. I'm 24, but you know what? Sooner than I know it, I'm going to be 34. I'm going to be 44. I'm going to be 54. You know, so it's like, don't worry about what other people think of you. I spent almost my whole life worrying about what people thought about me growing up. And now at some point you realize, listen, I'm, I'm not going to be loved by everyone. doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means this other person doesn't connect with you. There's tons of other people that will. So be yourself. Love what you do because life is way too short to, to, to live in misery or, or to, to live in, in regret, basically. Some good advice right there for sure. And drops the mic. <laughs> yeah, really good stuff. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Let's see if we can get you the redemption trivia. Redemption. <laughs> All right. So the easier one, because you got the easy one wrong, so I'll go a little easier. What All is right. the name of the school counselor for, for the kids in South Park? The guy that always goes, okay, okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Mackey. Yeah. Mr. Mackey is correct! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Havana Habanero for myself. You don't have to do any more hot sauce. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, Brian, my friend, are you a... You're over 21. Are you a beer drinker yeah. by chance? Um, it's okay if you're not. the thing is, man... Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, I haven't bought any beer or alcohol in like four months. So. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if if you could play anywhere and go on anybody's tour, you're opening for this major major artist. Like you're the direct opener, world tour. Yeah. Who who is the artist and why them? Mm. You think about that. Honestly, so I'll say two. I'll I'll give two, but the thing is, like one is a realist is a very unrealistic <laughs> answer, just because it's like kind of a, a fantasy. But then there's also another one that's like somewhat realistic. Um, the unrealistic one is Metallica, just because they're so iconic. Literally, probably my number one, number two favorite metal band in the world. They've done so much. I mean, they're going to go on the road with Pantera next year, which is very exciting. I I still haven't got my ticket for that, but and I, nine kills. I'll definitely try to do everything I can to to uh, come to that show. So I, I would say Metallica is one. When it comes to more of the realistic answer, I'd say somebody like Motionless and White because I feel like style wise it would match very well. Even if you had um, a band like. Let me think who else like like a Mike's Dead kind of band. They're, they're kind of like an upcoming. And I mean, I want to say kind of industrialish, but they're more like um, like how do you say it? I guess like rap metal slash industrial. At least that was the kind of vibe that I got. I could see them kind of opening up for for Motionless and White as well. Doing a tour like that would would definitely be an honor, mainly because of our styles. I think it, it would match uh, very, very well. I feel like you could play with like John Five or somebody when he does his solo tours. Yeah. Something like that would definitely be be possible for sure. And we have we've actually had I Sign Kills on the show twice, and it was a while ago. And at the time, they didn't exactly say opening for Metallica, but I don't think in their minds that that was possible at the time. And they're also on some of those dates with Pantera and uh, Metallica. So, so so anything is possible. You never know. That's true. Uh, That's true, man. Yeah. Ryan, what is? We only have a couple more for you, and then we'll let you go, sir. But uh, what is uh, the worst mistake you ever made in your music career? Maybe you invested in something that you realized later was a waste of money. You wish you had spent it somewhere else. Maybe you spent it a bunch of time on uh, promoting something the wrong way. Uh, you've already given a lot of advice, but what is one other thing that you could tell? Maybe maybe a band or somebody that's watching that uh, just you don't want them to make this mistake. Yeah. I'll, I'll go through two things. I'll go through the, the my biggest or a couple of my biggest mistakes, and then I'll go with um, advice for, for musicians. Uh, number one, when it comes to my biggest mistakes, um, I would say number one was doing uh, a couple of pay to plays. I feel like I that was definitely a waste of money. That was I'd say I spent almost 
a couple grand altogether in my career doing pay to plays. And it's just, there's not, I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong. If you got the money, you want to do it. It's your decision. You can do it. But for me personally, if I would have invested that money into um, more gear, more, more studio time, more, you know, anything just to upgrade uh, my craft or to expand my craft, that's definitely what I would have done. Um, I would say right up there when it comes to, uh, another mistake is I think I waited a little bit too long. Like I started, I, I wasn't that committed to this until I was like literally right until right before the pandemic happened. It took a while for me to actually be 100% dedicated. And that's another kind of regret that I have. I wish I was a little bit more disciplined in my teenage years. Cause if I was, I'd probably be, you know, um, playing fat, like not like huge festivals, but at least some kind of, uh, moderately popular festivals at like 20 years of age, you know, while I'm like 24 now, and then now it's like, I feel like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go and, and, and not rush it, but, you know, really step it up because like what I was saying earlier, you know, sooner than I know it, I'm 10 years going to go by 20 years, 30 years. Um, when it comes to my advice for musicians, for young musicians, it's just basically focus a lot on your craft at the, the beginning is focusing on your craft, making sure you, ha you have some kind of sound that stands out. Because there are a lot of bands out there that sound very similar, and, and nothing against them. But it's just if if there's a band out there that sounds very similar to this other iconic band from the '90s or '80s or whatever, why not listen to that band? Why would they listen to your band? That's that was my perspective on it. So even if it takes time, use your passion, use your time to create your own sound. You know, there might be a lot of people that not, that won't like it. There's definitely some people out there that I know don't get my music and that's fine. I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not begging for everybody in the world to, to be pleased by my music because I know it's not going to happen. But the thing is, at least it's something when you hear it, you say, Oh, that's Brian, Wright. I could tell by his voice. I could tell by his guitars, try to focus on something like that. And then once you're ready, put yourself out there, play some shows, it doesn't have to be the biggest venue in the world. It doesn't have to be the biggest festival in the world. Just put yourself out there. Um, put yourself out, out there on social media. You know, what you guys are doing um, when it comes to promoting um, the musicians on your Twitch, that's amazing. I praise you guys for that. I didn't even know about this stream until probably a couple months after I was at the local smoke out. So I'm happy to have discovered you, and I, I'm happy. And that's why I'm so happy to be on here <laughs> uh, getting interviewed by you guys. So that, that's why it's such an honor for me. Well, we appreciate you being here, man. Uh, what can we expect? Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll leave it as the last one of the day and then we'll let you go, sir. But what is the, the final, uh, what, not final, but what can we expect uh, regarding 2023? I know you said new recordings, but do you have like a timetable for I'd like to get a new single out by the end of spring or a short EP end of summer? Like what is kind of like your game plan for 2023? <clears throat> so this is yeah this is gonna be a little bit difficult but i believe if i just stay focused on the timetables and everything I, I can get it done um so if i want to i have a single fully recorded and everything it's called too late to relate i'm planning to i can easily release that tomorrow but the thing is i kind of want to plan some more stuff i want to record a few more songs before i i end up releasing that one my first single i'm planning to release by february and then basically I'm going to release a, a song every month all the way up till the summertime. I should have a good EPs of music out, out by the summertime. And then if I can, at least a couple more singles in the fall to, to end the year. So I'm hoping roughly around eight or nine songs finished, recorded, released out there by the end of 2023. But all of the releases will start early February. Hell yeah. Well, dude, Early February sounds good as far as the as far as recordings. We and you said you said Eric is the guy in Hollywood that you're going to be recording with. In North Hollywood, yes, yeah. Hell yeah! Well, we look forward to that. Brian, thank you, sir, for for popping in, hanging out with us. We wish you nothing but success. Please come back when uh, some of those recordings are done, so we can jam them, promote them yes. in any way possible. Thank you for supporting the show. We're going to support you as long as as we possibly can. And, uh, dude, you're awesome. I think we'll probably be kicking it in the near future because you're very local to my area. And um, I know Lizzie uh, kind of hinted, oh, she didn't realize you were this local, so we'll we'll do our best to throw you on some shows if you're down. 
Oh yeah, man. I'm, I'm down, especially like around March or April. That's when a lot of the um, recording stuff will, will kind of ease up on me. And I would love to play some shows. I'm literally tw- like 20 minutes or so away from where the smoke out was. So Lucerne, Apple Valley, got you, Victorville, perfect, <laughs> Inland Empire, even I, LA. I, I know care. we, I know we <laughs> just agree. I, this is like vaguely announced. It's announced, but it's like not put out everywhere. But uh, we're doing a um, okay. an ALS charity event in March. I believe JB Metallic, a bunch of our buddies are all performing there. It's really for a good cause to help raise money and build a a, a wheelchair ramp for somebody. And uh, but I, I think that that particular person putting on that event is looking for for more performers and, and talent and artists. If you're interested, I believe it's going to be at the middle of March. So if you are interested, let me know. I'll see if I can um, get you on and we can party together, perform and uh, have a good old time, raise some money and help and help out some people for a good cause. Bro. Yeah. Yes, please. I'm 100 percent interested. Um... I don't know. Do you have uh, an idea of where the location might be? I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be. It's going to be in the high desert somewhere. So like okay. Victorville, yeah, Apple Valley, yeah, esque, something like that. You don't have to. Tra- okay. You don't have to travel yeah, too man, far. Yeah, I'm. I'm down. Any show, any festivals out there? If you can give the word out, let them know. I'm. I'm. I'm ready by March or April for sure. That's more than enough time. I H- would love to. Hell yeah, Lizzie's on it. She's. She's close with Aeroform, who's putting on the event. So we'll connect you guys. But Brian, thank you so much for for kicking it with us, man. We appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Ryan! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Thank you for having me, man. Much appreciated. Thank yeah, you. Nice hang out with you again soon, man. Thanks for doing the hot sauce. Not everyone is down with that. I appreciate it. Cheers, and uh, we look forward to the new music, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you. Can't wait to play out there. <laughs>